Welcome back to another episode of MacBreak Studio. We're here in San Rafael, and it's show and tell time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just got back from uh, NAB recently, and uh, one thing that, that I in particular got excited about was what's going on in the world of 360 virtual reality uh, and how it relates to Final Cut Pro and storytelling. And uh, before we get started about this, we're actually going to do several episodes about this to talk a little bit about some of the things that you can do. It's a very fast changing environment, um, but there's some interesting things that I've been learning about that I'd want to share. I'm, I'm just getting into this stuff, but I want to give credit to um, Alex Golner and Tim Dashwood because at NAB, at FCPX Exchange, which you haven't seen that, you should go to fcpexchange.com. Uh, where you can see all the presentations that were given over two days at NAB this year. Uh, but Alex gave an, a really excellent overview of, of VR, and then Tim Dashwood talked a little about his plugins and how they relate to it. So I would definitely check out his, his video about this. Um, so you've been kind of geeking out with all this VR stuff. I have stuff. a little bit, I have a little bit. Because the takeaway we got from that is, um, there's something real that's going on here, and. Not like 3D how, stereoscopic? Yeah, yeah. So I think there's something real here that's happening. But how can you get into it in, a, in kind of an inexpensive way to begin to play with it? Uh, on the high end, we've got this this uh, cubert looking object here, which is the Nokia Ozo, um, which is uh, not ours. <laughs> $60,000. Yeah, that's a $60,000 um, it looks like equipment the equipment without storage and battery, which is another five grand. Looks like a little remote that Luke yeah. was. Well, this, this is this is sort of the top end because this can stream 360 stereoscopic um, 4K images. It's got these eight cameras on it, and it's it's totally top of the line. Um, and there's a range of things that you can do for acquiring uh, 360 type of media, but you can go down to something like this, and this here is called the Theta S from Rico. And I actually bought this. On um, Amazon? Uh, Amazon or b and yeah. camera, I think Amazon. Yeah. And uh, it's actually recording right now. So we're shooting this show also in 360. We'll give you a separate link that you can go to to kind of check it out uh, and see how that works. And this is $350 and it shoots both stills and video. The stills are roughly 5K. I've got the exact numbers here. Um, it doesn't matter, it's about 5K. <laughs> the HD video is, is the video is HD. 1920 by 960, everything's two to one, um, which actually can be a little bit soft once you're actually in a VR world. And I'll explain a little bit more about that. But you can play with acquiring material with a camera like this. And in terms of viewing it, uh, now Facebook and YouTube both support 360 material. Sure. On, uh, on YouTube, you have to be in the Chrome browser to see it. Um, and that's cool, you can drag around and look at stuff and that's kind of fun. Uh, but what I think is even more interesting is what's coming out with these HMDs or head mounted displays. Now, yeah, we've got this here. Before I get to that, you might have heard of the Oculus Rift or the HTC, HTC Vive, uh, which are now, the Rift has just started shipping, although a lot of people aren't getting them yet. But those, you know, the Oculus Rift will be 600 bucks, plus you need a powerful PC, not a Mac, yeah. to be able to, to play around with it. Uh, and then on the low end, there's this Google Cardboard, which is a piece of cardboard, which can work, but this thing is from Mattel, and if it looks like a Viewmaster, it's because it is. It's a, called a Viewmaster VR, and the cool thing about this is it's made of sturdy plastic, but you stick your phone inside it. i turn it a little bit toward the and camera. It turns, and it turns in, well, into that camera yeah. too. Um, so this turns into a VR player, which to me is much more compelling than dragging around on something uh, in YouTube. So you just take this and you stick your phone in it, and it ships with these little discs that allow you to look at little augmented reality and give you a menu for their own app, but you can get other apps. And an app I really recommend, I'm gonna show you real quickly here, uh, there's an app called VR Stories by USA Today, of all, of all organizations. And one thing that you can get on that, there's multiple videos, but there's one called uh, Experience the Blue Angels, and I'm just gonna show a little bit of it here in YouTube if you wanna get in a sense of like what's possible with VR. And we'll see, you might have to refresh the page here. Um, and I'm gonna jump ahead a little into this. So this is the Blue Angels flying. So while this is playing, you can see it play and look around. And this is pretty compelling here. It's even more compelling when you throw it in your phone, use the app, VR Stories app, in order to do the dual screens and look at it through here. It's That's an app compelling. that USC, USA Today yeah, has? Yeah, it's called VR Stories, right. right. So, but what I want to focus on here is, um, that was a little bit of background of like, if you want to start playing with this, you can do it relatively inexpensively. You can view stuff 
for this thing is eighteen dollars. Yeah, eighteen bucks okay. on Amazon. Yes, for eighteen bucks, it comes with an app. There's other free apps, so you can start viewing stuff immediately and get a feel for this without going out and, and spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a head-mounted display. You just hold this thing up and check it out. On the acquisition side, um, things are evolving. So what I want to focus on in this first episode is how do I get material onto YouTube? Okay, I, I've either shot 360 stuff or I've been given it, and how do I get it on YouTube? And I'm going to use Final Cut to do that. It's kind of the center of, the, of our, our process right. here. So here I'm in Final Cut, and first I'm going to show you some stills because stills are relatively easy to work with. You might look, they look a little bit odd because these are um, called equa rectangular projections. They've taken the sphere that you get and projected it. And this is identical to what's done with a Mercator projection or a world map. Right. When we take a sphere of the world and put it on a, on a rectangle. And so any kind of stills, these are just shot uh, around the house, but you just get a sense where they are or a place that I was over the weekend. Um, but video doesn't come in this way. Video comes in by default from this theta looking like this, where we see the two spheres. I'll just let it play a little bit of this. So here I actually have the camera mounted above my car. I'm driving down the street. So we get a little bit of video action. And this is kind of neat, but you can't really do anything with it yet. Okay, right. to, to work with it, it needs to be in this equa rectangular format. So the way I got it into Final Cut is I just connected this camera via USB. And uh, unfortunately, the finder doesn't recognize this camera. Really? Nope, it won't see it. So the way I got it in using Final Cut, but I can't really use it here. I need to do something to it first. So what I'm going to do is locate the file in the finder. So Shift F to reveal in the browser, Shift Command R to reveal in the finder, and here is my clip in the finder. I'll just press the space bar. We can see that's the same clip right there. Okay. Uh -huh. So to make what to make it equa rectangular, uh, Rico makes an app for the Theta for dealing with this. There's an app for that. Yeah. So this app can work with both stills and with video. So just example, another example of a still. I have a still here of um, that shot we just saw in the timeline, right? right? This table. If I drag it into this little Rico Theta app. It basically acts like a player, so I can now look around that still. Nice. Okay, I can look up and down and all around in a 360 view. So this is a still that was taken with that Rico Theta. Um, but if I drop a video in there instead, what it will do, it will convert that video for me to this equa rectangular format. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So now that that camera shoots at H.264, not yeah, the yeah H.264. So I'm going to cancel that because I've already done it. It creates a new version. It adds a letter ER onto it. You can rename it whatever you Aqua want. Aqua rectangular. <laughs> yeah, so if I try to open that up, now this is what it created. It took those two circles, the two hemispheres, and turned <laughs> it, I'll move forward a little bit, it turned it into this weird looking thing. Yeah. So this we see the entire world, uh, front and back of the car, kind of all unfolded into this <laughs> projection. Trippy. Yeah, so I brought that now into Final Cut, okay? okay? So here it is, and I can just play a little bit of it, and you can see kind of the whole world around you. And uh, the bottom, I'll show you that in just a minute. So a couple questions kind of come up from here because you can work with this now. You could actually export this out uh, and you need to do one more step, which I'll show you and put it on YouTube as is. But there are now some tools coming out that help you work with this stuff more inside of Final Cut Pro. And the ones I want to show you right now are, I'm going to go to the effects browser. Um, there's a couple tools from uh, Tim Dashwood, Dashwood 360 Toolbox and the Dashwood 360 VR Express. The toolbox is made for high-end production. Basically, if you're shooting with a $60,000 mm -hmm. camera, you want this toolbox. Mm -hmm. It's $1,000, it's mm -hmm. and it's a bunch of tools for working with stereoscopic type of 360. But this Express version is 100 bucks and is for working with material shot with something like this. Interesting. Okay, so one thing it can let you do is see what this will look like to the consumer. Because you know once this is on YouTube, it's not going to look like this, or once it's in a viewer. So in here, um, one of the plugins, you can see there's a variety of them. One is called HMD Preview Express. So if I drag that on here. Wow, instant. Instant normal view. OK, so I'm going to open up the inspector, and I'm going to give us a little real estate there. Um, so if I play this now, we kind of see a normal view. And if I want to look around, Within this little plugin, I can, for instance, change my pan and I can look around or I can uh, tilt to look up and down. So that would be the user's experience of dragging around 
mm -hmm. in YouTube or looking around in a, in a virtual reality headset, an HMD. So that's one really useful tool that you can use. Um, another useful tool he has is sometimes the orientation is wrong. So for me, I, I might have not, like when I did this originally, I shot with the camera pointed in the wrong direction. So the default orientation was at the back of the car. Right. So he's got another pro plugin called Reorient Sphere, which you can make it turn and have a different starting orientation. So pretty useful things. But even better than this HMD preview um, is he has a separate little app and I'll go back to my desktop. Dashwood. Well, this thing is just called 360 VR Viewer. And what I'm gonna do is double click on it, and I'm gonna go back to Final Cut, and it has this little viewer that shows you, I can make it bigger, exactly what the customer will see. And this viewer, so if I play now, it so shows us the final view, and you can click and drag around on it. So rather than using sliders, you can drag around. Oh, that's on way it. better than Much sliders. Much more interactive, right? Yes. To see everything that's going on. So sure. it shows you exactly what you're really going to get. Um, and then if I stop playback and right click on it, it'll go to my default orientation. So this little app is really cool. And one thing about it, if we look at this little heads up display it has, it'll handle stereo sources, uh, like with the, the Ozo there. And instead of outputting a flat window like we're doing now, you can output to an Oculus Rift. So you can have an Oculus Rift connected to your Mac and have the experience of the 360 view while you're editing. Really? Yes. So while you're building That's the story, pretty cool. you can kind of see how it works. So it's pretty nice that you can, that you can do that right in there. Huh. So That's just a couple of options for how to work with uh, this material. There's a lot more we'll, we'll talk about later. Um, one other kind of cool thing I want to show you here is, this is just sort of more fun than anything else, is uh, SugarFX makes a product called Revolve 360. And I'll show you right here, SugarFX Revolve 360. I've actually already applied it, so I'm just going to turn it on right here. And this does this tiny world kind of look. Wow. So this is a way of not putting out virtual reality, but putting out a regular video, but I'll play a little bit of it, that um, <laughs> just creates kind of a cool effect. And there's a lot of presets in here that you can choose from and play with. So it's kind of a complimentary product right. to uh, the Dashwood tools. It's more of a plug-in effect, what you can do. It. It's, it's like when yeah. you drop an effect on your video and have it and you can actually, tiny world effect or whatever. Exactly. Have you. And you can actually do this with the Dashwood tools. He has, a, he has a plug-in called Tiny Little Planet that's part of his toolkit, <laughs> including the Express one. But this is kind of a neat effect uh, that you can use to apply to your videos and do a you know a fun little tiny world thing. So um, another little example. So I'm going to turn that off. and how do I now get this out to, to YouTube? Yeah. Okay, so I've brought it in. I had to convert it to this echo rectangular format. Maybe I adjusted the orientation to where I want it, uh, and I've checked out how to look. So I'm gonna mark my range, and I'm just gonna export. You know, I, here I would export a master file. So mm -hmm. I choose master file. I'm not gonna do it because I have it right here. So here is my master file, and I'll just press the space bar so you can see it. So there's my master file. By the way, one thing I didn't mention, there's something weird going on down there. The and bottom. What I want to show you, this is this is a really cool thing where the Dashwood tools allow you to composite additional graphics into your video. Because sometimes you want to put a logo in there, you can put animated text, mm -hmm. you can just put about anything in there. So what I did with this, if I turn on this um, Project 2D on Sphere Express, that's the part of the Dashwood tools, I've included a Ripple logo and I've used one of our Ripple tools to rotate the logo in 3D space. So it's a little hard to see what's going on there, but if I bring back my player and bring the window forward, and I'll right click on it to reset it, and drag down, we can see there is the Ripple logo, and it's actually animated. So you can stick an object anywhere in 3D space. You bring it in and position it anywhere in 3D That's space that you want. That's pretty in sphere. cool. And it looks a little, it's low resolution here, um, but let's go back out to the finder now. I've exported that. I've got it right here. 
And I'd love if you could just upload this, but there's one more step. There's one more step you have to do. Wow. Okay. It needs some metadata right. that YouTube will understand and say, aha, this is a 360 video. And it's really easy, and YouTube provides the, um, the little app. It's called the Spatial Media Metadata Injector. <laughs> 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 Which sounds really <laughs> fancy for adding a little string of metadata. Right, that's, right. that's all it does. And yeah, you can use a little Python right. script, but I like you know, using an app when you can. So if I launch that app, it'll uh, it'll just say, hey, you know, open the file. And so you, you say open the file, and you select the file that you want to choose. There it is right there, open. And then you click on the sever spherical checkbox, only on that, and then you choose save as. Okay. And it takes, it's very quick quick because it's just making a copy with the metadata. And there's my copy. It adds the word injected. So there it is. It doesn't look any different. It looks exactly the same. Okay. But then all you do is you upload that to YouTube. And uh, I believe I have it right here. And I'll play a little bit of it. So here, here's that shot. Uh -huh. And if I drag around on it in YouTube, you can see I can drag around and look, look behind. I can look up at the sky uh, anywhere I want. Only on, I'm in the Chrome browser, I tested. It works in Firefox also. It does not work in Safari, Apple. Uh, I just don't <laughs> but it get, works in Chrome no. and it works in Firefox. And it gives you the way to start playing around with what you can do uh, with virtual reality. Now notice the resolution is a little soft because you think about this, it's taking a 1920 by 1080, but that's the whole world. Right. So we're basically looking at about one sixth of that world because the front, back, two sides, top and bottom. bottom. So if you take 1920, it's actually 1920 by 960, and divide that in, into six, it's kind of like a 360p right. experience. It goes back to the early days of the postage stamp quick time. Yes, it, right? it really does. It takes us right back there again. Yeah, wow. it takes, so you need wow. to really make this immersive experience in high definition, you need a lot of data. So that's, you, that's where you get to this. That's where you get to this, yeah. But in order to start playing with it, because idea, you know we're, content creators and we're storytellers. And if you're trying to think about how is this, can this be a useful medium for storytelling, you can get into it inexpensively because the tools are reasonable and the process is not too hard. And Final Cut Pro uh, has a place to play in this place where you can actually edit. I didn't really With do With the any, Dashwood plugin, of course. Right. And I didn't do any editing, but you could, of course, edit multiple little scenes together and cross from one to the other and start telling some stories. And we'll talk more about that um, in the next episode. All right. So hopefully that was a nice little primer on working with VR and Final Cut Pro 10. I'm actually fascinated with the possibilities. Check us out, Ribble Training, all the usual links below. We'll see you next week.